The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, welcome everyone. My name is Jawahar. I'm uh, the innovation lead at Legrand for the data center products. So I wanted to set the stage as to why we are here first. If you are like me, you're working from home in a beautiful office and perhaps sharing it with your kids and family. Um, so we were wondering, like, how are our customers managing in these difficult times, managing the infrastructure from remote, from home? So we have, uh, we came up with this idea of having some sessions together so we can bring you all together, share some tips and tricks of the products that you already have so you can better utilize the remote capabilities that you have. Uh, so we have, uh, we're going to do this in uh, as a five part series for Raritan products on Wednesdays. And we also have another five part series for server tech products starting tomorrow on all Thursdays for the next five weeks. So that's how we're going to do it. And uh, to tell us more about today's session, I'm going to turn it over to Joel Bryan, who's on the line here, who's our head of uh, global tech support and apparently winner of plenty of medals, as you can see there. So I'm going to turn it over to Joel. Joel? Uh, thank you, Jawahar. Thank you. And uh, hello, everybody. Like Jawahar said, my name is Joel Bryan, and I'm the Global Post Sales Director um, for tech support, documentation, and, and services here at Legrand for the Raritan and the ServerTech brands. And today's session, we're going to focus on you know, how to ensure that you're receiving critical alerts from your PDUs. Uh, we want to make sure that you understand, based on your priorities, that you're getting the alerts that you need to then act and restore service to, to whatever uh, you were alerted to. And walking us through these sessions over the coming weeks will be Duncan Gwynn, who is our post-sales product specialist as part of our, our global tech support team. Um, Duncan is based out of, out of Ohio. Um, and following the walkthrough, uh, as Jarahar said, we're going to open it up for questions um, as it relates to this particular function and feature. Um, however, if you have other pressing issues that needs to be addressed, it's best to email us at techatraritan.com. Or if you need live support now, uh, you can always call our 800 number and you'll get a person to that, that'll be there to, to help and support you. Okay, so we're going to get started, and I'm going to hand this over to Duncan. Duncan, it's it's on you. All right, thank you, Joel. Thank you, Jawahar. Uh, let me get my screen going here. So as Joel mentioned, uh, we are covering how to set up uh, critical alerts, and we're going to look at two methods. We're going to look at SNMP, and we're going to look at SMTP email alerts. So first things first, let's get logged into the Raritan PDU. I'm going to log in as an admin user. Uh, someone with admin rights is able to make these changes. So now we can see our dashboard here. And on the left-hand side of the menu, uh, down towards the bottom, you'll see device settings. So we're going to click on that menu option. And then back up near the top, we have a submenu called Network Services. And then the second option down is going to be SNMP. So we have our SNMP agent set up here with uh, SNMP v1 and v2c enabled. And we've got our read and write community strings uh, plugged in there. Now, this is different than setting up SNMP notifications. Uh, this is the, these are the settings that allow the PDU to be pulled by your SNMP manager. And that SNMP manager, our case, is PowerIQ. And it's really only pulling the PDU every five minutes or so, uh, depending on how you have it configured. So if a critical alert were to pop up, we want to make sure that that gets sent to PowerIQ immediately so that we're notified. So down at the bottom here, we have SNMP notifications. And by default, these are disabled. So this checkbox is not filled in. So we want to go ahead and select that. And then you'll see notification type. So there are a few different options to pick here. So we have V2C traps, V2C informs, and then V3 traps and informs. 
form message is the same thing as an SNMP trap. However, it allows uh, the SNMP manager to send an acknowledgement back to the Raritan PDU so that we are aware that the SNMP manager actually received it and didn't just throw the trap away and drop it off. So if your SNMP manager supports that, it's a good method to use. You'll see that when we select that, we have some options here. We have you know, a timeout in seconds, and then we have the number of retries before the PDU gives up. For this video and training, we're just gonna look at uh, V2C traps. So down below, we have a host. So this is gonna be the IP address or host name of your SNMP manager. Um, like I said, in our case, we're using Sunbird's Power IQ. So I have our IP address plugged in here. The default port for SNMP traps is 162. This can be modified as needed, but we're gonna leave it default. And then we have a community string. Um, if you're, uh, this is gonna have to match what your SNMP manager requires. So with those fields filled out, we're just gonna go ahead and click save. Now those changes are saved. Now, one thing that I wanna show you is if we go back into the device settings menu, we have event rules. So after we set up that SNMP notification in the SNMP menu, um, what is configured here is an action that basically the same menu that we just saw, but it is set up as an action. And then we have an event rule that triggers that action. So this event rule is anything that happens on the PDU. So it's a catch-all. So any sub event on the PDU will get sent to our SNMP manager so that we have a nice log of everything that's occurred. So I'm not gonna modify that because that's set up exactly how we need it to be. Um, so that is SNMP. So really all you have to do is add in that SNMP uh, manager information and enable notifications. Now, if you have uh, V3, you wanna use SNMP V3, you'll notice the, the menu changes here. The fields obviously get more advanced. There's a lot more authentication options. Um, and you can you know, plug that in based off of what your SNMP manager supports, the authentic and authentication and privacy protocols that are needed. Change that back to V2C traps and then save again. So for SMTP email alerts, that is the next option down. So we're still in network services. I'm gonna click on SMTP server. And then we have some fields to look at here. So IP address and host name. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the SMTP server that we have in our lab. The default port is 25. This can be modified as needed. We have the sender email address. So this is gonna be the email address that actually hits your inbox. And we recommend as a best practice to use a unique email address for each PDU. So in most instances, you're gonna have a PDU name that is unique to a cabinet. You know, it might be uh, rack A27 PDU A or PDU B. So you can plug that in here. In our case, it's just PX.80. I'm going to say px.80 at raritan.com. And number of sending retries and then the time between the retries. I'm going to leave that as default for now. If your server requires authentication, you can use this checkbox and then input your credentials. And then also if you require a TLS certificate, you can check this box and upload it. Um, our server is just a, a demo server, so we're going to leave it as is. And then we can perform a test. I'm gonna go ahead and send an email to tech at raritan.com just to make sure that our server is configured correctly. So it was successful. I'm gonna go ahead and save these changes and wait for that email to hit our box. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right, there we are. So. This is what the email test looks like. So just SMTP configuration test. Came from px.80 at raritan.com and it tells me the server that it was sent from. Now the other key portion to getting email alerts is we actually have to set up a, an event rule to do that. So 
we've configured the SMTP server. We're going to go back into event rules. So I showed you what the SNMP event rule looks like, and that's automatically generated on the PDU. The ER, however, is not, so we have to create that. First, we have to create an action. So we'll call this critical alert email. And then from the drop down menu, we'll select send email. And then the recipient email address. So, you know, if you have a, a group email address that you're using for a particular data center site that you want to send it to, you can plug that in here. For us, we're just going to use tech at raritan.com. And then you can also use custom SMTP server settings if you want to here, but I'm just going to use the default settings that we just plugged in. I'm going to create a custom subject. And you'll notice when I click in that subject line that I get some event context information items. There's a big long list of things to choose from to kind of customize this, this subject. So I'm just going to call it critical alert. And then I'm going to click this again to get that menu back up. And then there is an item called device name. So what that will look like is when I get you know, from this PDU, it's going to say critical alert PX.80. Or if you have a rack name, it's going to be your rack name, PDU A or B. You do have the ability to use a custom log message as well and use those same context items. But when we're doing an email alert like this, that's going to cover multiple sensors, we may just want to leave that and have the PDU create the log message. That way we know exactly what has gone on in the PDU. So now that I've created an action called critical or email, I have to create an event rule that tells us when to trigger that action. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on new rule. And for this rule, I'm going to say this is a critical inlet alert. By default, when we create a new rule, it's going to be enabled. But if you accidentally uncheck this, it's not going to work properly. So just verify that this is checked. From our event dropdown, we're going to select PDU. There's another sub menu here. We're going to look at inlet and then sensor. And now that we've selected sensor, you'll see multiple sensors pop up. So these are the supported sensors on this particular model's inlet. So RMS voltage, current, et cetera, et cetera. All we can do is select any sensor. And then we have to select, you know, what happens, you know, when, when this sensor goes into what state do we want to get an email? So we'll, we'll select above upper critical threshold. So the trigger condition, we have asserted, deasserted, or both. So, you know, asserted is when it goes into that critical state. Deasserted is when it leaves the critical state, and then both will get an email for both situations. So if it crosses the threshold and then, you know, three minutes later it goes back down below it, we'll get an email, email in both instances. So we'll look at that. And then your available actions will select critical email alert. Now you can select multiple actions. So say that, you know, you need to select, you know, a couple different emails to send out, or you want to also send a syslog message or something, you could do that. But after we have everything selected, we'll click create. And now it is saved. So uh, as Jawahar mentioned, we're going to be doing this in a five part series and in a later uh, webinar, we're going to actually cover how to test these and make sure that uh, we're receiving these messages properly and will safely trigger uh, an alert to, to be sent out via SNMP and SMTP. So at this point, uh, this concludes our, our live demo. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Jawahar and Joel, and we'll open it up for questions.